Hi, everybody. We're here today on Inspired by with Free Spirit Fabrics, and we are here with uh, Kay Fassett and Brandon Mabley, and they're making faces at me in the background, so it's quite the distraction right now. <laughs> So I don't know if everybody can see you or not, but I can see you guys. And I have you muted just so that you guys know. So I'd like to welcome everybody back for the, for the I have to block Brandon because I can't look at him. Um, <laughs> for Inspired By, I'm Sharon Thornton. I'd like to welcome you all back again. Please send us thumbs up and hearts and uh, tell us where you're viewing from so that uh, you know we know where you're all tuning in from. Uh, I'd like to direct you if you have any questions to the freespiritfabric.com uh, page. If you have any questions, Nancy Jewell will be on with us this week answering questions on behalf of Free Spirit. And we have Kafe and Brandon here again. And I can't look at Brandon here because he's being very distracting to me. Thank you, Brandon. You're making this. <laughs> So um, I'd like to just do a quick recap on a couple of things that CAFE already reviewed with us over the past couple of weeks. So the first week CAFE uh, discussed his Quilts in Burano, the book. So if you are interested in getting this book, we recommend that you head to the, your local quilt shop and see if they have the book and see if you can get it. And the first week CAFE went over the book and he discussed um, the quilts that were in the book. He had some of the quilts that were in the book and he, uh, showed them to us. He told us about his inspiration for these quilts, um, brought us uh, through the book, and um, he told us about his inspiration for going to Burano to do the photo shoot and a lot of the different, um, you know, aspects that they think about when they're shooting all of the quilts and all of the color and all of the things that inspire them there. And then Cape also shared with us that he is working with. Um, how he brings his painting and his needlework and his knitting and all of the different um, elements of design that he works with, all the different mediums that he works with, both in color and design and how he brings that over into quilts. So it's very interesting to see and listen to Kaif and all these things he has to teach us about his world and what he's doing. And so that was really what he went through in week one. And in week two, which was last week, uh, Kaif talked to us about um, Okay, I already forgot the colorway. So the color, the, the fabrics that are the collection that's delivering this month in August, Cave had talked to us about, you know, his inspiration for that, how he goes about designing the, the Cave Collective. And the Cave Collective consists of Cave Facet, Brandon Mabley, and Philip Jacobs. And Cave explained to us how he gets the design and the work that they go through to do the colorations, the different colorations that they come out with for each one of the collections that uh, CAFE releases. So this week we're back and uh, with CAFE and Brandon and CAFE is going to take a quilt of his choice out of Quilts in Burano and he's going to recolor it this week in this collection that's shipping in August. So the, uh, there, that fabric is coming to quilt shops right now. So if you're interested in any of these fabrics, please reach out to your local quilt shop and ask them if they have it or if they're receiving it and that you want some. So I am going to now allow myself to see Kafe and Brandon because Kafe has been, I mean, Brandon's been uh, doing things in the background that has made it distracting for me, but we welcome all of you. And um, I'm gonna turn it over to Kafe because we wanna hear what Kafe has to say and not me. So um, let me see, I'm going to unmute. Can you guys hear me? Oh, wait a minute, hold on. Looks like you're still muted. One sec. Let me see. Spotlight video. Wait, we still can't hear you. Can you unmute it, Brandon? <laughs> Let me see. It's on Cave and Brandon, I know that, but I can't see how to unmute. Oh my goodness. If anybody out there can help me, please help me. Can you hear us? Can you hear us now? Yes. This is we can Brandon. Hear you now. We can Good. hear you now. Excellent. <laughs> so can welcome to Cave and Brandon. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, this is Brandon and I'm Cave. Uh, I just would like to talk to you today about one of my favorite 
quilt forms. And that is the snowball. I've done many, many snowballs in my books. If you've been following me through all the different books we've done, you will see I've done many variations on the simple snowball, which is simply a square with the corners cut off so that it has the illusion of being a circle. And what I love about it is that we do workshops on this all over the world. And uh, what Brandon and I are always amazed at is how people take this very simple structure and do a luscious color story. And what, the way we advise them is to stay as much as possible in one color range like all shades of red or blue or yellow. And behind me, you can see I've got greens. Um, this is one that I did quite a few years ago when I was into very, very leafy green stories. And so um, I just put up an old one just to show you where we started life. Uh, recently, this is one that I did in quilts in Ireland. And so here we've got a very, very uh, big kind of snowball and it's very contrasting. So I'm doing like a sort of checkerboard of dark and light. And you can see in between the little uh, cornerstones, I've done uh, black and white uh, polka dots. So that's one version. Another version that I like very much is this one I took from an old vintage quilt and you can see the whole border of this quilt is done with very contrasting dark and light kind of checkerboard and then the actual uh, bits in between which I call the um, cornerstones are done kind of black and white and so that's quite a tricky thing which I've done in my new version. Uh, this is the actual quilt that I did for uh, quilts in Verano. And you can see that I was taking all the stripes in our collection and putting them together as, as a very extreme, yeah, Brenda can help me hold that up. And you can see the very, all the different colorways kind of went together. And because the whole theme of this was just striations of stripes. And one of the things about Burano is that the, the windows are very light around each of these wonderfully colored buildings in this fabulous island. But the shutters are usually very dark green or even black. And so you get black and white with the high saturated color of this village. And that's what I was trying to address in this quilt. Nice big snowballs. This is quick and easy to do. These um, are eight inches square. So uh, it's really fun to have a go at something that you can actually accomplish in a weekend. Right, get it. right. We love that. So Kate, that was <laughs> called Geometric Snowballs from Quilt Verano. Yeah, exactly. Okay. And, um, if you wanted to do something in stripes and keep that whole stripe thing going, um, this is, these are stripes that I've done and they're very, very dark. So if you're into darks, here's a wonderful range of dark woven stripes that are shot. So they're kind of shimmery colors. They have an atmosphere and you could put all of those together and make a wonderfully dark and mysterious God, that would be beautiful. quilt. Yeah, it'd be quite yeah, wonderful. That'd, yeah, that'd be beautiful. I don't know, I don't, you might do bright red or something for the cornerstones. So that, that would be a fun way of playing. And you see each, each of those stripes is just a wonderful woven stripe and, and it has a wonderful shimmer to it, which you can see when you move the fabric around a bit. Yeah, so Kate, those are your um, shot cotton stripes, right? And That's those right, yeah. Dipped out to I, I've, I've done this different. new range of, of shot cottons, which are really shot, so they have a wonderful shimmer to them. And uh, also uh, these woven stripes. And um, 
they're new to the shops. And they're new to the shops. So yeah. I'm hoping people will ha really have fun, like doing weaves with those stripes. Can you imagine doing, you know, this way and that way? Yes. Very simple structures or, yeah. You know, uh, uh, Kathy Dowdy in Australia did a wonderful thing with my stripes, taking great big diamonds and cutting so that the stripes were diagonal in the actual diamonds. And it was stunning. And you could do that with these stripes. Uh, another thing that we've done with them is making scarves out of uh, putting all the dark colors together and doing big canthus stitches on top of it. And it can be gorgeous. Should I get the scarf? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Brent, we're going to run and, 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 and fetch one of the scars and we'll just have a look at it. Uh, because that is a wonderful thing, a way to play uh, with these dark, rich colors. And while he's getting that, I'm just going to show you a piece of knitting that I've done. This very, very deep palette and close tones. This would be a beautiful palette for a snowball. And in our classes, many people have taken all the sort of husky reds and ochres and done wonderful renditions. So I always love it when an idea goes from knitting to needlepoint to uh, a painted fabric to a painted painting and then ends up as a quilt. Uh, so I like to run my quilt ideas through all of those different mediums that we play with. You can see on the wall or bits of knitting. I'm always playing with um, knitting designs. Uh, for my collections of knitwear. Um, uh, this is another one, I'm just while well, he's finding that scarf. This is another, this was taken from a Japanese uh, painting uh, of, of a geisha in a wonderful outfit, but aren't those kind of crosses, dark crosses, mm -hmm. intriguing? That's and that's beautiful. what knitting can do if you're not afraid to use color. Uh, and use manageable lengths of yarn so you don't go mad with balls getting tangled. But um, that's just a fun way of playing. So Kate, you knitted that piece that you just showed us? That's right. Yeah. Yeah, that's beautiful. I'm, I'm, I'm making blankets out. Oh, there, there's, there's the scarf. Brandon. <laughs> <laughs> Brandon. This is a we, we can't have pantomime in England this season. So Brandon's doing his own pantomime. Here, here you can see the different, um, uh, the way that the cantha stitches are stitching over these big patches yes. on the scarf. It looks beautiful. How, how beautiful that is. Look, look at that. Couldn't I yeah. just go to the ball? Yeah, you look very handsome. Yeah, I, I, I love, there's something just wonderful about stripes on top of stripes and never worry about lining them up and making them perfect. So like that that, even better. That, that's just the way we're starting to play. Now, one of the things that I did with this idea uh, that I'm going to work with you and work on my work wall, which is this wonderful uh, piece of flannel and things stick to it so I can place my fabrics on that and create a vertical version which is just like a quilt. And we do this in our workshops all over the world. Um, but one of the things I wanna show you are the different fabrics. You can hand me the fabrics, Brandon. So this is, this is one of the fabrics that will be in it. And you can see it's called Animal. And that is uh, just a very, very beautiful uh, print of Brandon's. And in this nice dark, ish smoldery colorway my shit sean's wearing yeah yes it's in my shirt we'll we'll talk about and, all and our things after there's another one of brandon's uh wonderful hot magenta look at that it's called stream oh i just it's just like a field of poppies isn't it yeah you know here in the spring we get these fields of poppies still uh that are just so lush and this is just like that so that's, that's a one with, it's gonna go into it. And here we've got a wonderful cool blue, uh, which is not unlike the shirt I'm wearing, which is made of one of my fabrics. But this is, uh, look at that stream with these yeah. wonderful blobs of cool blue colors and then the kind of acid green and orange running behind it. So that's gonna be in it. 
And my favorite thing in it is called Bali Brocade, which is one of Brandon's fabrics that I completely love. I love the, the outlandish size of this. And also the fact that it's very cool palette, but with this kick color of hot orange dropped into it. And that you'll see is gonna play a very important part in this quilt. This is um, one of- I interrupt Philip you for a quick second. That yeah. Valley Brocade that you just showed us, I wanna remind viewers that the first week you showed that in the background on that Lone Star quilt. So you'd shown it in the black version. That's right, that's right, yeah. yes. It's yeah. beautiful. So I see yeah. why you like it so much. And here's melons in shades of blue and purple with just a little hot kind of orangey, maroony color cropping up. I, this is the most fun to use. I'm a freak for stripes. So I much. absolutely love stripes. And so um, I'm finding it you know, terrific to, to play with abstract stripes. Another fabric that is been amazingly popular, people have absolutely loved this, is um, the coleus leaves that Philip Jacobs has done. And you can see how exciting the patterns are on those leaves. And that also is this nice, dark, cool colorway. And all of these fabrics are gonna go into the piece that I'm going to show you. This one is called Dancing Dahlias. Just, and we get a nice blue and green and purple colorway of that. And Feathers, this is another terrific hit from the, the, uh, <laughs> the easel of Mr. Philip Jacobs. Look, look at that, wouldn't that make a great shirt? Yes. Very nice. Yeah. And then we showed this last week, but we, we, it was a bit out of focus. So I'm, now you can go in and see the wonderful details on this um, agate um, print and how, how beautiful those layers of color are. Look at the black, how exciting that is with that cobalt blue and the magenta. Beautiful cave. Good. The colorations uh, are amazing, not only in that colorway, but in all of them. And it's rather yeah. good with my shirt. E everything's going with my shirt. Well, yeah. I knew what I was doing. Now, <laughs> I'm going to take this down and start to show you how I would go about creating a quilt. So uh, I'll start here and I just smooth this on. You can see that the, the pieces stick. So there's the feathers. So Kay, if you're using your um, grid wall, your flannel grid wall for this. That's right. Yeah, the work wall. It's yes, really beautiful um, fabric that the uh, cottons cling to very nicely. You see how quickly that's going up for Cave. And some, some of you might have some of you might have wondered why we chose a, a neutral color gray as a background base. Well, as you can see, if there were any white gap, any gap showing, and the the grid or the flannel wall was white, then it would show through like it was laced with dental floss. <clears throat> right, we like it better this way. Yeah. So there we've got the feathers. We've got don't touch, don't touch. a so um, we, one of we mine called dream. What you're recreating, Cave? You what? I don't know if we've given enough hints. If we should ask everybody what you're recreating over here, which quilt? <laughs> well, <laughs> it, it's um, it's that quilt I just showed you with the stripes. 
No, I know which one it is, but I'm not sure if we've given a full reveal to our viewers what you're do which quilt you're doing. Okay, well, it all will be revealed because I'm yes, going to show I you know. this. That looks will... amazing so far. Look at the colors. So you can see that the palette is quite close. And um, I've got lots of different textures, but this is this is a beautiful one. This is um, our Brassica, which is one of our classics. I'm throwing in some of our classics that are the right color tone. Yeah, Kate, they're saying, was wondering which quilt it is. <laughs> so <laughs> so earlier, Kate had shown us his uh, geometric snowball quilt from Quilts in Burano. And so he's That's recreating right. right now, before our eyes, a new one in uh, classics as well as the fabrics that are shipping right now to quilt stores. And Sharon, if they want the list of these fabrics, where do they get them from? I'm sorry, what did you say? If they want what? The these list fabrics? of these fabrics. If they want these fabrics? If they, yeah. want, if if they, they want the list. If they want the list. Oh, of if they what? want the list of the fabrics, yes. They, uh, Nancy Jewell or Free Spirit will be posting all of those fabrics. I think Nancy, sure. I'm not sure if she was going to post them all now, but we have that list of fabrics. And we'll be posting them either on this Facebook page and or our website. So you can go there afterwards to see which uh, fabrics CAFE used to recreate this uh, quilts in Murano quilt. You see the bottom one, can't read it. Okay. CAFE, you look great. Do I blend nicely with the quilt? No, I think you both uh, stand out rather well against it. Great. Yeah, Look at this, right before our eyes. Keep just nice. throwing it up there on the wall. Yeah, so that's how easy it is to create with this work wall. And then I can stand back and I can look and see how it's shaping up, what the difficulties are. Um, and one of the things is I might have put in something like that. And I think you can see that if I did, this one really jumps out. It's too light. The rest have a kind of smoldering harmony. So mm -hmm. the good thing about looking at it is that I can say, oops, I'm going to take that out. I'm going to save that for another quilt. And I'm going to keep this dark wonderful smolder going. That's very important. And one of the things that we talk about a lot in our workshops, what, what always thrills us is when people start cutting their very colorful arrangement down to more and more just one mood and getting all the rust to work with the maroons, with the magentas, with the purples. And then it has a wonderful excitement because of the restraint. And that's something about color that makes color come alive. When you have things that kind of get too light like these did, then what happens is it overshadows the beautiful glow that you get from a darker palette. But the barley brocade is the color that opens, set, opens it up and gives it a little bit of- Yes, I mean, what I'm loving in here is Brandon's barley brocade, which is just enough of a kind of flame of color that lifts the whole palette. Now, when I start to put my, I'm going to do two different colors in my uh, little cornerstones. And I start with these and I've got Brandon's red um, jumble. I don't know if you can see that. Yes, you can see a little, little bit of a, like a big sort of primitive polka dot. And I put that every other one and then I didn't iron these. Yes, that's, that's, that's better. That will stick 
And then I stand back and I look at that and I can see, oh, that's very sharp. So um, I might give it a chance and try a couple more. Um, okay. okay, when you're working on a quilt like this, do you put the fabrics up in the wall and then like come back and revisit it at a later date? Sometimes, yeah. If, if I can't solve it, I'll go to bed and go to sleep and then come up and catch it unawares in the morning. You know, just suddenly walk in and boom, I can see, oh, that is wrong. You know, it just strikes you. So, and there's, I ran out of the red one so I can just see there's one that's too dark. Anyway, when I look at that, I realize the red is kind of fading in. The, the pale is just too pale. And so I take those down. So this is a perfect example, Kaif, of you coming back and saying, I don't like it, right? That's right, exactly. And in my workshops, people do that. So now I've got two Aboriginal dots. So I don't know if you can see these, but yes, yeah. they, they, they have texture. One is a kind of like old faded blue jeans. In fact, it's called denim. And then this one is called orchid and it's black with little red spots. And so that makes a very punchy story. So just let me show you how that works. So I put those up and then I put my orchid pieces on. And you can see the wonderful depth, velvety depth of that almost black color a rich dark maroon and then I uh, set up another one I want to surround this square with my um, fabrics my, my little cornerstones so that I can see if it's making a circle And with any of your squares, did you feel the necessity to fuss it cut? No, uh, Brandon's just reminding me of something very important. There's no fussy cutting in this kind of um, story, unless you fussy cut everything and you make it a story about each one being a big, strong design that is um, given that thing. But but. This is really about texture and color. And so it really doesn't want to get um, any more uh, fussy direction of, of cutting carefully. You just cut the pieces as they fall. Now, when I look at that, I can see that I'm creating a circle here. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, um, it's framed beautifully. It looks very nice. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 you know, in a minute, we'll take the camera closer so that you can see it close. But and then I just keep putting them up until I've convinced myself that that's the way to go. One of the things about this design is that the cornerstones take a lot of fabric because each one is going to get a square of fabric on the corner and then you're going to so it, you, you'll see in the directions, but um, it takes quite a bit of fabric. But anyway, I begin to see that that really shapes up and I can, I can see that I've got something. And then I want to think about what's going to go on the back. Now we've been talking about our new backing fabrics. This is a wonderful big lotus leaf in quite yeah. a dark, rich colorway. I think this would be quite stunning on the yeah. back of this quilt. Perfect match. Or or you could use the blue, um, Brandon's gonna come right close with, this is the uh, cobalt blue um, Millie Fury and done in a nice big scale. Yeah, look how exciting that is. How and busy. We could see it perfectly. <laughs> Great. So, um, yeah, so, you know, you'll find a backing. And then what I like to do is something uh, 
like a, a good strong uh, design, probably Brandon, one of your, oh, your dot flower would be great to use. You don't want to go get your dark dot flower. Jake, we just got a whole bunch of hearts of people loving all of those. Oh, cultures. really? Yes. How, how <laughs> wonderful. That's great. <laughs> you know, it's very difficult in these times when I can't see my audience and feel them. Because yes. usually when I'm talking, I can feel what the audience is feeling. Now, here's Brandon's wonderful dot flower in a beautiful, dark, smoldery colorway. How exciting would that be as the binding oh, that for, would be for this quilt? Yes. How gorgeous. That's and, perfect. And if you don't like doing binding, you know what you do. You, you, you sew it onto the quilt, and then you invite me for lunch, and I will sit there all during lunch and sew your binding for you, because I love it. It's You're going to get a lot of invitations for that, Kate. <laughs> well, that's great. Because isn't it beautiful to sit down and finish a work that you have poured your heart and soul into and that yes. finishing touch. And it's just so neat. It's the only neat sewing I ever do. I once sewed a doll for uh, a competition in Houston. And I said to the woman organizing it, um, did you like my doll? And she, I said, my sewing was a bit rough. And she said, you call that sewing? So I've never <laughs> tried again. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, you know, I, um, I think it's interesting, Kate, when you're talking about the binding and like that's the favorite part, you know, for yeah. you to sew that on. I know that a lot of quilters actually, you know, they love all the other aspects of it. And that's, you know, some of them dislike that part the most. So I think yeah. you're going to have a lot of people reaching out to you. You're going to have a lot of binding. <laughs> to well, well, that's wonderful. But, but to me, the, the actual favorite thing for me is doing what we've just done here. Oh, yeah. It's just putting up sheets of color that's and true. taking away the distracting notes. That's very important. One of the things that I've said last week, and, and it's so important, we could never say it enough, is don't be afraid to waste fabric. Don't stick something in that doesn't really work. And you know it doesn't really work, but you're, you know, you paid money, you bought that fabric. Save it for another project. Stop it. Stop it. Right, Stop it. exactly. Stop it. Yeah. So um, that's just the kind of advice I would give you is take your time with the color and grow a stash. Go out and buy your favorite things. Even if they're outrageous and they don't go with anything in your life now, you'll find a project suddenly that they will fit into. And then you have these wonderful things to play with. Um, I used to say, I've got drawers full of fabrics that I come back from my travels with. And, you know, one day projects, you know, one day I'm going to make this quilt and that quilt. But it's very important that you have enough to really play with when you want to play with something. Kate, do you find that when you save those fabrics, like you just mentioned, that you actually do go back to those fabrics and pull them out? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, I, I, I've shown uh, this project already, but this is just a little thing that I sewed by hand um, at the beginning of COVID when I was going mad. I took all the, the fabrics I have that have big and small dots. And so there's my orange print and my, um, you know, the prints that have like uh, the painters. Paint, paint pots and right. And, 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 and this is some funky little thing that I probably found in a dime store in Australia somewhere or something, you know, and there's right. another big polka dot. There's a, a, a print of oranges, as you can see, you know, mm -hmm. and branch into this wonderful fabric called labels. Uh, you know, all of these are kind of circular dotty prints. There's Brandon's wonderful um, dot flower. And then sashing it with black and white, and now that I've gotten so close, you can see how bad my sewing is. I don't make anything line up. I'm we don't very... care, Dave. It's... Yeah, good. <laughs> yeah, no, and we don't care. <laughs> good. So, so, you know, it's, it's just fun to take a lot of different things. And if you have a big stash, you can go through and you can find the ones that are bright and belong in a project like this. You know, it had to be bright. It had to be circular. And that was the requirement. You know, yes. so, I like 
you know, it's just, and I, I, I wish you were all here and we could just be chatting and I could answer your questions. I wish, you know, you, you would ask something and I could tell you what you really want to hear. Or um, hopefully this process and how simple it is, the fact that, you know, uh, with Liza in America, I've taken um, a kind of camel color uh, flannel and put it on these great big um, pieces of board. And then there, it's like a screen. You can fold it in half, stick it under a bed and get rid of it or behind a door and right. then bring it out when you want to do a big project and open it out. You've got this great big wide thing. Kind of so, like when you roll up a puzzle or something, right? Exactly. Pull it back yeah. out. <laughs> yeah, I, I've just I've just received a wonderful puzzle um, uh, from a friend, and I'm about to sit down and do a jigsaw puzzle. And it's just a miracle that I took the time off to talk to you today, because ah. this, this puzzle is winking at me across the room. Ah, oh, well, we're really glad that um, it didn't wink harder. <laughs> <laughs> Dave, could you tell us a little bit about your relationship with Liza? I mean, in how she plays into um, everything that you guys do? Well, the great thing about Liza is um, I met her because she was a, a yarn rep and I used to be a big knitter. I don't know if everyone knows that, but some yeah. people don't. And uh, so when I was, um, I produced my first book, Liza bought up six copies to give to all her friends. And that night, that she had bought those books, she got a call from my yarn producers saying, uh, would you like to be a rep for our yarn company? And she said, damn, I could have had those books wholesale. But anyway, <laughs> it, she uh, became one of my best friends in all the world. And we see eye to eye and she and I and Brandon are like the three musketeers. We're constantly in touch with each other. And we uh, talk about lots and lots of different things um but but you know mainly about, about textiles and she's a great quilt maker and she got me into quilting i mean she had a baby and she made a quilt for that baby and she called me up and she said you've got to start making patchwork and so i um reluctantly joined her because i was very busy at that time i didn't have time for an extra thing in my life but once i started i realized first of all, what a fabulous world of textiles it encompassed. And I went around to all the little local stores and I bought fabrics, but I began to realize I went into every store looking, where are the big florals, the big, wonderful English fabrics? Because the quilts that I knew were English quilts and they had these big bouquets of flowers. And I wasn't finding those, I, you know, uh, Debbie Mum and Thimbleberries ruled yeah. supreme. And so we had these right. tiny little motifs on everything and yeah. little smiling, you know, sunflowers and things from Miss Mum. And so it wasn't, there was no big fabulous orchids and dahlias and the things that I wanted to see in life. So it was very, very exciting for me when I was able to design my own fabrics. And my very first one was a great big uh, bouquet of cabbage leaves called uh, chard and that was I just you know went on from there going from bigger and bigger occasionally I do small prints and I love them and paperweight and roman glass which is my very first print are in my classics and those go on and on and mm -hmm. and the polka dots and things like that are fabulous for bindings and for sashings and things like that Sharon, mm -hmm. going back to um, that fabulous question about Liza, uh, which is very important. Liza doesn't get enough credit in the world that we're in. Basically, mm -hmm. we wouldn't be in the patchwork world if it wasn't for Liza. Um, she watches our back. Uh, it's also that she encouraged Keith into the patchwork world. And basically, um, uh, uh, if it, yeah, if it, Liza also sews all of Keith's quilts and writes instructions yeah. for the hardback books. See, that was that, that's what got me into quilting. She gave me the offer I couldn't refuse. She said, uh, you design the quilts, I will sew them. And so, you know, the idea that I would actually sew quilts and try to tell people how to sew was just beyond <laughs> me. 
Uh, so, you know, that, that was what, what made us all work together. Right. And, and, you know, and just, you know, thinking about uh, the three people in the, in the CAVE Collective, that there's Brandon and myself and Philip Jacobs, and the idea that Brandon has his wonderful language of geometry and more primitive, strong, you know, uh, very, very uh, personality driven fabrics. And they go incredibly well with Phillips and my kind of more painterly flowers and things like that. And so mm -hmm. it's, it, it, you know, with the three personalities working together, we create um, enough work that we can actually build quilts every year for whatever book we're going to be doing. Also, right. Liza has her uh, a team that she works with in um, yes and uh, and in New Hope, Pennsylvania, where Liza's based, and she has a little <clears throat> um, unit of makers. So she's doing her um, her effort for us in yeah. America, and then we have a small team here in the UK: um, Ilaria, Julie, and uh, Janet Hay. Yeah. Who so and right you can you hear all this? Yes, we can hear him. Great. Yep. Excellent. Yep. So Liza really manages a lot of the uh coordinates all of the quilts and the makers and the quilters and all of that. Yeah, she and Janet Haig. Uh okay, they work together. Does it in this country, yes, in okay. England, and, and 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 Liza does it uh in America. We yeah. have we have uh two incredible sewers here in the UK. Um, and um, uh, um, yeah, Ilaria and Julie are, are, are fabulous uh, quilt makers. Um, and I'm always excited, you know, to see the, the next batch of quilts that we've designed right. coming in. And we have a wonderful location for the next book, uh, which is uh, going to be very, very exciting to go to and photograph uh, this oh, autumn. Look at you. You're you're getting all ready for that, Kate. I am. I am so excited about it because that's our, my next favorite thing. You know, we've made the quilts. Then to find locations like Quilts in Barano, you know, that find this wonderful village with saturated color on every house. How amazing was that? But with this next book, it's going to be English village quilts. And so it's, we have these, this fabulous village uh, full of wonderful uh, Tudor buildings. And mm -hmm. oh, it's just that wonderful history and the richness of the English decorative arts. And, you know, I, I once designed uh, As You Like It for the Royal Shakespeare Company. And that was tapping into the Elizabethan fabulous embroideries and uh, beading and everything that they did, the stump work boxes and the wonderful embroidered and lace and everything that they used to make. It was the most extraordinarily creative period. And boy, did people dress up in those times. Yes. You know, that queen with her pearls that went right down to the floor, you know, and her mm. fabulous big velvet skirts and brocades and I mean, can you imagine how exciting that was to make costumes for that production? I know. Pretty oh. amazing. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm curious to see what comes out of this uh, year of COVID in terms of creativity. I know people are working yeah. on a lot of, you know, handcrafts and keeping themselves busy that I think we're going to oh, see a lot. Absolutely. And, and, you know, people are tuning into the fact that flowers and gardens are more beautiful than ever. Yes. That the bird song, I mean, people, the English are just going mad over bird song because we've never heard it so clearly. You know, there's no airplanes, there's very right. few cars buzzing around, and right. the pollution is down. And the, the fact that you can step into your garden, you don't even have to step into your garden, you can just open a window and you hear fabulous birds singing. And right. uh, the gardens are just burgeoning with flowers. And so, you know, people are tuning into that and the poets and the writers and the painters are really coming alive. Yes, I think so too. Well, Kay, if we have a few questions for you, if you wouldn't mind. Um, Good. Last week, I missed this one. Mary Beth Sims last week asked, um, I know you did a series of paintings in all white and ivory. How did that study of color influence what you do now? And then she also comments, you're a genius of color. 
So, you know, she'd like to know how your white and ivory influence influences you now. Um, like your study of it, white. It, you know, you know what it's like when you have a fast. I mean, does anybody ever fast anymore? Yeah. But you know, you know, when when you stop eating for a few hours and you let your body rest and you so forth. And so that was like a fast from color. Because I, I had done quite colorful paintings until then. And then I found these beautiful ironstone dishes and uh, beautiful kind of pudding basins and things like that, pudding molds uh, here in England that were <laughs> wonderful ivory color and very neutral colors. And so I got into this whole kind of uh, neutral and pale white palette. And it was like a fast from color. And then I got over it. You know, I started little by little creeping in a little bit of pattern, you know, blue and white and a little bit of pink and white, and then another, you know, and then I was going to the Victorian Albert Museum and looking at wonderful oriental paintings and realizing that they put all these patterns together. And so more and more, I started adding more and more patterns, making the cloth under the still lives more colorful, began to look at patchwork quilts at that time as as a base for my still lives. Mm -hmm. And so that's when, you know, my fascination with textiles started at that point. Right, well, we're glad that Liza pushed you in that direction because as quilters, you know, we, we love you for your color and design, so. Well, thank you. I'm, I mean, I love doing it. Well, we, we can tell you, and we thank you very much for that. Um, another question we have is, do you, what's your least favorite color? Do you have a color you don't like or does all color have its place? Uh, all color has its place, but some colors are more powerful than others. And in the early days of working with people with color, they would put yellow into everything, a bright lemon yellow. And it would, if they were working with a dark smoldery palette, it just threw everything off. Mm -hmm. And so there's a place for yellow, of course, it's a wonderful color. And you can do, I've done incredible yellow quilts, but you have to be careful how you use it because it's a very powerful, it's like a headlight in the middle of your composition. Exactly, exactly. but it's there. Um, when are you traveling back to the USA? I don't know if you would really there, know that just yet. <laughs> no, we don't. There are many mysteries in life now, That's aren't there? True. We don't know what any of us are going to be doing. Exactly. We don't know if we're gonna go into lockdown all over again. You know, right. lockdown starting all over the world again, you know, so we have to be careful that doesn't happen here um, right. and and behave ourselves so it doesn't. So, so you perfect know, world, perfect world, maybe next fall. Maybe. Yeah. Oh, I mean, listen, I'm I'm raring to go and stand in front of an audience. I can't wait until I can walk into a room where people can actually get together and not be afraid of each other. I know, I know. It's yeah, really, well, I know, I think we're all missing that. Um, which craft brings you the most pleasure? So of all your uh, mediums that you work with, could you say that there's one that you prefer over another or do they no, all- No, not really, not really. They all have their place, but I love to knit. Knitting is a wonderful, simple way of taking a basket full of color and start to combine it. And, um, you know, uh, like this is this is a piece I'm working on now, which is very much like the palette that we're working on. But I'm taking all of my swatches and I'm just going to show you this big tumble. You can't see it because it's too big to show. Right. But this is swatches that I made to design sweaters from. On the wall. And so it's just working with all of these different things, uh, you know, and and so that is a wonderful way to play with color and express myself with color. Exactly. But um, uh, I do, I love my patchwork. I love painting the fabrics. I love cutting them and putting them up. Um, I love needlepoint. You know, needlepoint is a, is a wonderful thing. Like here's uh, a needlepoint design that I've done uh, yes, as a cushion. That. And so there's, you know, a high contrast very, very strong. And that's fun, you know, to play with things like that or to do very delicate renditions of vegetables and that sort of thing. Um, but, okay, if a piece you know, like that one right there that you just showed us, 
How long yeah. is, I mean, is there a possibility to put time to that piece? I mean, how long would you say a piece like that? If, if I sat down and I wasn't distracted by the world, uh, I could do that in about two weeks from start wow. to finish. And that's designing it and, um, uh, you know, drawing it out and sitting and stitching it. Wow. So that means like a year for me. <laughs> <laughs> for most people, most people take quite a long time. Yes. Um, all right. We have a couple other questions in here. Let me see here. People are asking about the puzzle. Can you show the puzzle? The puzzle that's calling your name or is it laid uh, out? I, I can't really. Um, it, if you, it's, it's laid out. Oh, okay. And, have a cover or anything? I can't bring the big table over. We can show the picture. Yeah. Picture? Picture Here's the it? puzzle. Here's the puzzle. <laughs> oh, yeah. There it is. Okay. I, I, yeah. Can you see? Isn't it a beautiful yeah, image? Yeah. We can know what you're working on now. <laughs> Dave, when, but, you do, when you yeah. do a puzzle, do you start in the middle or do you start in the edges? Do you know? That's a very good question. I know you're supposed to do all your edges and finish your frame and then fill it in. I get about half the frame done and I get bored with that. And I, I start I start piecing together the bits and I find a lot of red bits. And so I know that's going to be, you know, the Cardinal's robe or whatever. Right. And right. so you, I start I start just making it, you know, because I can't I can't hold back. I'm not disciplined in that way. Um, let me see. Then the people are suggesting that you make puzzles out of your quilts. <laughs> I would love to. And if you know a, a puzzle company, please turn them on to me. I've got lots of designs and lots of ideas, and I definitely want to have a puzzle company. Oh, well, that's a great suggestion then. So we'll have to yeah. have people get in touch with you for that. So then I think the last thing, Kate, that we should really talk about right now are all these shirts. Yes. Yes. We want yes. to talk about your shirt, yes. Brandon's shirt. I always get ribbons coming, and, and Brandon can come and show you his beautiful shirt. And look at the side ribbon. I get, oh, I like isn't, that. Isn't that gorgeous? Yes. Yeah, very nice. A, a kind of Italian zigzag that uh, I designed for the Renaissance Ribbon Company. And also, he's got my buttons. Yes. That's come very close for you to see that. So, Brandon, tell us about the buttons. Brandon, you're on. Yeah, the, Brandon. The button company is called. Oh Dell. yeah, the the button company is called Dell. Right. And I, what I've collected buttons for years. I have lots and lots and lots of buttons, and I used to make button covered hats, and. One of the things is that I would notice that it was very hard to find the kind of button I wanted, which was just circles of color that were just sharp and interesting and jewel-like. And so I finally was approached by this wonderful company called Dill, and I did my own uh, version of, of things. Brandon is going to bring a thing over. I'll, I'll get it. Shall I get it? <laughs> Okay, I'll get it. Well, Brandon and Kay for getting the buttons to show us. So those are from Dill Buttons. And no, yeah, no. yeah. Brandon, I love your no, shirt. It, yeah, it's a range of buttons and they're available uh, through Dill Buttons and they can tell you where um, mm -hmm. they're, they're distributed all over the world, so. But this is the kind of hats that I used to make. Wow. Covered, covered with or every kind of dark smoldery button I could find. Wow. And the, these are skull caps. And if you go on to kfacet.com, you can see a whole range of them. Uh, they're all for sale. Um, they take K for about uh, two weeks yeah. to sit down. Wow. It's very so, amazing, Kate. So that's just fine. And that's what got me into designing my own buttons. But, but uh, you know, go, go and have a look somewhere where you can see the the range that we've done. They're really fun. Well, yeah. And you know, if any more information that you want to know about our world, just go to kfacet.com. Um, and that's an information page on all the different avenues that we weave and duck into. Um, if anybody knows of a puzzle company, then get in touch with Liza, because Liza 
would put that into um, production for us. She she's been trying to get it get it to happen for us, but nobody has said yes yet. Maybe you're sitting oh. there watching. Right. Well, we're all say yes to doing your your quilts and puzzle. Um, okay. If we love your shirt as well, we see all the Renaissance ribbons on your shirt. Yeah. And you got it on the cuff, and then you've got them on the button placket. Yeah. Very nice. I just want to make sure all the quilters and sewers out there are aware that Cave's designs with, are. Go with ahead, the, uh, With the Renaissance ribbons, you don't have to buy the whole reel. They actually sell them in, in smaller packs, too. Yeah. So. Yes, I actually have that. I'll show that in the end here of right. the little packets of the ribbons. And um, that's all I have for questions right now, Cave. For. Well, uh, it's been lovely seeing you all and, and being able to uh, invite you into my studio and produce a, a design. And that's the way we work. And uh, I hope uh, that you have uh, a similar setup and that you can go straight to work uh, being inspired by this whole well, day. You've, you've been very inspirational, I have to say. And like I said, we've gotten tons of hearts and thumbs ups and lots of comments and a lot of interaction and everybody loves you. We all miss you. We wish, you know, you were out on tour. We miss both of you, Brandon. Well, Sharon, Sharon, if anybody wants to do a workshop with us online, go to creativebug.com, Kate okay. Fassett or Brandon Mabley, and they can actually do a workshop with us yeah. through Creative Bug. That's awesome. Yeah. I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah, so check that out. Um, so creativebug.com. Creativebug.com and then just put in our names. Um, and anybody that wants to follow us on uh, Facebook, then join us either on uh, this, the KFASA Collective, which Philip Jacob and Liza basically do. We don't really get involved with that so much because there's too much activity on there. Well, but whenever anybody makes something with our fabrics, they can put it onto that and then we get to see it which is wonderful. Right. Liza will alert us. And then there's um, the K Facet Studio page. And then there's my own personal page, Brenda Mabley. I put up a lot of pictures on things that I want to share with you about our world and that we're making or doing. And it's kind of, uh, and then there's also Instagram. So join us there. And otherwise we're thinking about you guys and just hopefully we can keep on inspiring you. Yeah. Oh, you well. always inspire us. Okay. Thank I, you, guys. Have a lot of fun. Yeah. We've really enjoyed having you these three weeks. We hope that all the viewers get the uh, Quilts and Burano book and go out and get the fabrics and recreate a uh, quilt. And I'm going to continue to talk to our viewers. I don't know if you guys want to say bye bye to us, or do you want to hang on a little longer? Or hey, we're going to say bye bye to you. I have roast. I have parsnips to roast. It's <laughs> seven o'clock in the evening here. And we'll raise our glasses. Oh, that's right. Yeah. That's right. Raise your glasses to us. Thank you for joining yeah. us, guys. Okay. We appreciate it. Bye bye now. Bye bye. 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 So I believe that I'm still on here. So I'm going to continue talking to everybody. So thank you so much to Kay and Brandon. And I'd like to continue to talk to, to all of you about um, Say Yes to Kay Collective. So with Kay and Brandon, it was just so fabulous to have them these past three weeks with us. You can go back out and take a look at all of the um, previous uh, weeks that we've done for Inspired By. So they are out there on our Facebook, they're on our Instagram, and they're also on uh, YouTube. So you can go out there and you can look at week one, you can look at week two, and you can start this week over if you tuned in late and you'd like to see the beginning. I'd like to just quickly show you my top here that I made also in this new collection. This is Cave Shot. We've got a little bit of it, the Renaissance ribbons and we've got some buttons here, the glorious colors sent our way or my way to get them onto this top. So there are all kinds of resources that sell the buttons. Um, one of our, our coworkers, Sarah Asby also made a beautiful top in Cave's Agape uh, fabric and it's trimmed in the tiddlywinks and we'll probably have a picture of Sarah in that top um, on our Facebook page. So we encourage you to go there to look for our, you know, all these tops. It's great to see Cave's fabrics also used in clothing. So don't just think of all of these items to just strictly be used for quilting. You can absolutely use them everywhere. Behind me are the 108 inch quilt backs. They're 100% cotton sateen. 
uh, Cape has some that have already been out there and there are some new ones that he showed us today. And we again encourage you to go say yes to the CAFE Collective, go to our website and on our website under Be Inspired, it will tell you about um, the Say Yes to the CAFE Collective. There are some great prizes there. We'd like you to go and uh, make quilt tops and use uh, we, you know, his new collection or you can use some of his older fabrics as well. And all of the rules for this program are on our website. So please go to the website and take a look at all the details for this, the deadlines. Um, I have it pulled up. It's August through November 23rd. Um, but you can see all the details there about Say Yes to the Cave Collective and win over $700 in prizes. So please head to our website and look for that. We thank you for tuning in every single week to come see us. This was a very exciting series with Cave and Brandon. And we thank them so much. We will be back next Thursday, which will be August. Um, you know, ladies, I didn't prepare myself for um, this aspect of it. So hold on one second. So August 27th, we'll be back at three o'clock and we will be here with uh, Quiltworks. Um, Judy and Judell Niemeyer, they will be back. They made a gorgeous quilt in Caves Fabrics. It's called Crimson Poppy. And we'll be showing you that quilt next week. So if you have any questions about uh, Free Spirit Fabrics, please head to freespiritfabrics.com. We love to hear from you. We love to see you. And please send us questions. We're always happy to help. So everybody have a wonderful week and we'll see you next Thursday at 3 p.m. for Inspired By. Thanks so much and have a great, great day.